I think a little over a year ago, I did one of those you laugh, you lose challenges. And basically the twist was that it was conservative comedy. And because conservatives are inherently unfunny, I kind of upped the challenge. I tried to play on the hardest difficulty. So I made it so even if I laughed ironically or because of cringe, that would also count as a regular laugh. Because, I mean, let's be honest, I'm not going to laugh at conservative comedy. But, you know, if you kind of broaden it and broaden what's acceptable or what is technically laughter, you know, then it... uh then I guess it makes it a little bit more challenging. Uh, but this time, what I want to do is rather than just doing uh, conservative comedy in general, focusing on the Mike Huckabees and the Greg Gutfelds of the world, we're going to look at some conservative COVID comedians. Um, now, I'm not sure if you all knew about this, but there was apparently a Defeat the Mandates rally that took place, I think, in uh, California. I'm not sure where. Uh, and I saw people talking about it, and I was wondering, like, why the fuck is everyone talking about this rally that probably took place back in, like, I don't know, November. And it's because it took place last weekend. A Defeat the Mandates rally in April of 2022. Uh, does anyone even have mandates in their states? Because for me, like in Oregon, we don't even have a mask mandate at this point. The mandates are over. So why are we still complaining about this exactly? Are anti-vaxxers just bitter? Are anti-maskers trying to make a point? I mean, maybe if you told me that this took place in July of 2021, I think, okay, that's to be expected. But it's happening in April of 2022 when there's no fucking mandates. So I don't know why they're still dwelling on this dumb fucking issue, but nonetheless, they are. And um, I want to I wanna talk about this. So I just want to show you this intro really quick. Please welcome American comedian, political commentator, and YouTube personality. Jimmy Dore. They take themselves so fucking seriously. You're bitching about mandates in April. They're gone. You've won. Congratulations. You've all defeated the mandates. Now, can we please shut the fuck up? Holy shit. It's over, folks. You did it. You won. Why are you, compl why are you complaining about mandates? Like, what the fuck? I genuinely am perplexed about why this took place in April of 2022. Like, you could have saved it for like a month or two, uh, assuming there's going to be, you know, another wave with BA2. But they do it now when there's like no mandates. Okay, let's take a look here. Hell out of Moderna. And they said you can't sue Moderna if you get injured by the vaccine because they passed a law that says you can't sue Big Pharma for vaccine injuries. And I was like, why would they pass a law like that? And they said, because it's safe. Okay. Now, let me just note that I'm officially um, having to withhold laughter. Okay. So if I, if I laugh, even if it's ironic, then you all have to call me out. Um, but this is supposedly a conversation that he's having with the person who's administering the vaccine. Um, and this did not happen. What he's saying here is just made up, obviously, but he's trying to be funny. Um, the problem is that even the audience doesn't laugh. And this is, uh, very cringeworthy when he says the joke, delivers the punchline. And then there's like one person who goes, huh? And so, of course, I got injured and I had to go through. Of course, he got injured. I don't believe him at all. All kind of treatments. One of them was they put Botox in my neck for my stiff neck. And it worked, but it's still embarrassing because now nobody can tell when my neck is smiling. A lot of mm, that hurts. That's so cringeworthy. Holy fucking shit. Now, somebody else had posted this. We can look at the full thing if you want to. I just want to tell you really quickly what the science on masks are, okay? So here's the science. So he's talked about this on his program, and he said that masks work, if I'm remembering correctly. So I don't know what the fuck he's going to say here. Mask. When you walk into a restaurant or a nightclub and you're standing up, the virus is coming at you from all angles, right? But once you get to your table and you're seated... You're good. The virus then goes over your head and hits the wall behind you. And that's how we're going to kill the coronavirus. 
We sh I mean, that is stupid, right? It kind of defeats the purpose of the mask, uh, the indoor mask mandate if people are wearing their mask and then they take it off when they're seated. Uh, but it just kind of speaks to how we never really had real lockdowns in the United States. And we didn't take it as seriously as a country. If we were taking COVID seriously, then that would not be allowed. But even as little as we took it seriously, that's still too much for these dipshits because they're still screeching about defeat the mandate when there's literally no mandates. Now you don't even have to wear a mask at the entrance. You could just not wear a mask the whole time. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe he's making the argument for masks here. But... I feel like, yeah, I feel like this joke has been made before. I think that people on the left ha have pointed out that it's kind of stupid, like it defeats the purpose to do. That. So there's no disagreement there. But let's be honest, if there was no indoor dining allowed during, you know, the uh, last wave, Omicron or Delta, he would be screeching even louder. He'd say that's bad. So do you support masks or not? Do you support mandates and taking it seriously or what? Like, I just there's no way to appease him. There's no way to appease him because it's not about the policies and what makes sense. It's not about the science. It's about saying what his right wing audience is going to praise him for. Shouldn't be handing out vaccines. We should be handing out chairs and tables. Oh, that's a great joke. Oh, look at their fucking they're dying. They can barely contain their laughter. Holy shit. Even Fauci agrees. If you're seated, you're protected. The coronavirus, while being deadly, is respectful of mealtime. This isn't even dad joke level. It's not even boomer humor. It's worse than that. And if you're wondering why Jimmy Dore is so painfully unfunny, it's because whenever he was funny before, Ron Placone was writing all of the jokes. But since Ron no longer works at the Jimmy Dore show, Jimmy Dore is not funny because he has to write his own jokes. And when he writes his own jokes, this happens. You sit down to have a meal, the virus comes out, and then it sees, oh no, there's a potato skin, everybody back. Mm. It's just, it's so painful. The coronavirus, while being deadly- The Fauci impression is so bad. Jimmy Dore is not an impressionist. He's not. It's why he has Mike McRae do all of the impressions. And then he reacts to Mike McRae, McRae doing the impressions, and that's his comedy. Mm, it sounds like it's Mike McRae's comedy because he's the one doing the impressions. This is why you don't do impressions, Jimmy Dore. So I, I, was, I was wiping down everything with a bleach wipe. I had one day I knew something was wrong with me because in the middle I go, I am They're bleach wiping excited. a cantaloupe. And I that stopped for stupid. a second and I was like, well, somebody breathed on it. I got to wipe it down. Yeah, that's dumb. And I knew there was a problem when I heard my wife on the phone saying, yeah, Jimmy's in the other room wiping down his banana. So I went to get Damn, the vaccine, the right? Because I was super afraid of it. And I asked them, I go, is it safe? And they go, yeah, it's safe. I'm like, is it safe? And they but yet he's not an anti-vaxxer. Why the fuck you lying? Why? So I'm like, all right. So they give me the vaccine and it was like nothing. I didn't feel anything. I'm like, oh, that's no big deal at all. I'm going to go home. They go, you can't go home. I go, what? They go, you got to stay here for 15 minutes in case you die. This happened, definitely. I was like, you sons of bitches. You told me it was safe. They're not even laughing. They're just kind of like, huh, yeah. The reason why you stay there is in the event you have an allergic reaction, right? So my mom is allergic to basically everything. And she sometimes is allergic to like ingredients that are in medication or in vaccines. Like when she got the flu shot, she was like really itchy all over. Um, so that's what, like if somebody has an allergic reaction, you're there so they can treat you. You know, if you really need it, they give you an EpiPen. But it doesn't really come to that. Like my mom, who's allergic to everything, got the COVID vaccine and she was okay. Like she did get a little bit itchy from it, but she's allergic to basically everything. But you wait because of people like my mom who have to deal with, you know, um, allergic reactions. Like my mom can't even take penicillin. So there are certain people who 
uh, might react in a certain way. It's not because they're worried that you're going to die as if they gave you poison just now. Oh, is he going to be poisoned from this vaccine? Like, that's the takeaway. And that's the joke. And that's why they're not laughing, because it's objectively unfunny. Jen Pepper, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Really appreciate that. They go, it is safe. What are you, an anti-vaxxer? I go, I just got the vax. You're the one. This is this whole long drawn out conversation that he's having with some clerk at like Walgreens who gave him the shot. You're probably like one of 15 people and they're just going boom, boom, boom. They're not sitting here talking to you. What are you, an anti-vaxxer? As if they'd say that. It's so, this is so weird. You won't let me go home. Why can't I go home? We have to monitor you for 15 minutes in case your heart explodes. They definitely said that. Look, uh, they're just fucking, they're dying. Look, at they're laughing. They're so, they're just, they're busting a gut. Hey, if that happens, I am suing the hell out of Moderna. And they said, you can't sue Moderna if you get injured by the vaccine because they passed a law that says you can't sue Big Pharma for vaccine injuries. And I was like, why would they pass a law like that? And they said, because it's safe. What's the joke? And so, of course, I got injured. Yeah, big and Pharma I bad. Of course, you got injured. Big Pharma bad. We get it. Pharmaceutical companies are bad because they have life-saving medication that they withhold for people for purposes of profit. If you're the sole manufacturer of a particular medication that's life-saving, somebody doesn't have a choice, right? They have to take it. If they increase the cost, well, you've got you've to pay for it. Otherwise, you die if it's life-saving. That's why Big Pharma is bad. They engage in price fixing, not because they're delivering poison. I mean, this whole argument is essentially against modern medicine. Are you a Big Pharma shill because you got the vaccine? Uh, is that like honestly what he's saying? Okay, so I guess you're a Big Pharma shill if you have a headache and you take Tylenol. Or if you have heartburn and you take Pepsid. Congratulations, you fucking Big Pharma sellout. It's so stupid. Just become a faith healer then. Pray to Jesus, Jimmy. That's the only safe way. That's the only way to be sure. Reject modern medicine. Reject all of modernity. And that's the only way to be sure, right? I had to go through all kind of treatments. One of them was they put Botox in my neck for my stiff neck. When he does his show, he's like looking backwards at a television and he's raging the entire time. Like fucking straining his neck. There's no fucking way that that's healthy. Like you probably have a perpetual stiff neck because of that. Because now nobody can tell when my neck is smiling. Uh, is it, you can hear Steph fake laughing in the audience too. Did you hear that? Embarrassing, because now nobody can tell when my neck is Listen smiling. <laughs> so embarrassing. If she's not there to fake laugh, then you don't know when to actually laugh because there's no fucking jokes here. But you gotta get <laughs> ready. They don't tell you you got to get ready because everyone's going to get coronavirus, Omicron. They knew this all a long time ago. And so you got, I got ready. I got what? my vitamin D3. I got my zinc. I got ivermectin. And I bought a horse because I don't want to look like an asshole. Too late. That, that was crazy that Joe Rogan kept talking about ivermectin. And then he invited Dr. Sanjay Gupta on his show from CNN. And I was like, oh, well, Dr. Sanjay Gupta is going to embarrass Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan announced his guy's fighting in cages and he's a doctor. And I don't know if you saw that episode, but the exact opposite happened. Joe Rogan got the CNN doctor to admit they were lying about ivermectin. What? I don't think that that's what happened. If I'm remembering the episode correctly, Joe Rogan didn't like that they said that he took horse dewormer, which ivermectin, for humans, it's a parasitic, but it's also a horse dewormer. And a lot of people were taking horse dewormer because dumb fuck Republicans were saying that this is what you should get instead of getting the vaccine. And since they didn't get access to it because doctors wouldn't write prescriptions for it, they'd go get fucking horse dewormer. So, you know, CNN said, oh, well, Joe Rogan took horse dewormer. They didn't say, oh, we were lying about ivermectin. What a way to misrepresent this entire thing. I mean, again, this is fictitious because he's telling stand-up. So I don't believe that his doctor or the person at Walgreens or whoever administered the shot was like, are you an anti-vaxxer? None of this is true. Uh, so, you know, of course, he's going to lie and embellish at least a little bit when it comes to the Joe Rogan bullshit, too. And Joe Rogan is a fucking moron, by the way. And that not only you will not is ivermectin. There ain't nothing to comply with. It's done. You did it. You won. 
the, the mandates are over. You don't have to comply. Congratulations. Nobel Prize winning human medicine. It's on the WHO list of essential medicines. So is other medication. That doesn't mean it's meant to treat COVID. I mean, the study was released that essentially confirmed what we already suspected, that COVID-19 or, or ivermectin was not a treatment or preventative for COVID-19. And this motherfucker is still going on about COVID-19. He just can't take the L. He's got to be proven right on this. You're wrong. Take the L, dummy. But they... But they did that to, to uh, confuse you. Because ivermectin is also used for horses, they wanted you to think it was horse poison, and you're crazy for taking it. People were literally getting horse dewormer, and at fucking these places that sell medication for animals, they had to put up signs saying, you have to show us a picture with your horse, because people were buying horse dewormer, and they were shitting their guts out. They were shitting out their intestines. So that's why people were talking about horse dewormer. But, you know, antibiotics, 80% antibiotics are used in farm animals. That doesn't make penicillin a cow medicine. My dog takes Prozac. That doesn't make it a frickin' dog medicine. But that's how they try to confuse it. That's like saying, hey, I saw Joe Rogan drinking a glass of water the other day. Why is Joe Rogan drinking toilet fluid? I mean, it's about how much ivermectin people were taking. They were taking a dosage intended for horses. That's the issue, you dumb fuck. So just because ivermectin is also prescribed to human beings because it, you know, kills parasites, that doesn't mean that you should take an amount meant for a fucking horse. I, I mean, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. What a brain-dead, smooth fucking brained argument that this boomer is making. Why would Joe Rogan use that stuff that killed all those people on the Titanic? So the story of like, ivermectin what? is, what is how powerful is corporate propaganda is, ladies and gentlemen. They can make you think an essential medicine that has saved billions of people's lives is somehow poison. And if they can make you think that, they can make... That's what you did with the vaccine. You made people think that the vaccine is bad, right? And that is life-saving. With ivermectin, that is not used to treat COVID. So that's why people were pushing back. That's not propaganda. That's just people saying you're wrong. What you do is propaganda. What you are doing is saying, you know, this free medicine that's widely available that literally has saved hundreds of thousands of lives. Maybe you shouldn't take it. I wouldn't recommend it. I got a stiff neck from it. Oh, wow. You had a stiff neck from it. Jesus fucking Christ. How many people in his audience decided to not get the vaccine because of him and then ended up getting really sick, getting stuck with long COVID or worse? I mean, do you not feel bad? Does that not keep you up at night, Jimmy? Of course not. Because Jimmy Dore doesn't give a shit. It's all about money and clicks for him because he has devolved into a full-blown grifter because he has shifted so far to the right, just used Republican talking points for years. And the only time he actually LARPs as a lefty is uh, to sow discord within the leftist movement. So if he could find a way to promote Medicare for all or promote... Uh, free, you know, student debt cancellation, it's in the sense of, oh, well, why didn't AOC talk about student debt cancellation or Medicare? Why didn't Nina Turner tweet about Medicare for all or something of that nature? It's because this is an operative for the right. Wittingly or unwittingly, he is a Republican Party propagandist. You think that the president isn't demented? <laughs> Bro, look at they're having so much fun. Gotta go. Well, it's been great to talk to all you white Gotta supremacists. <laughs> and in honor of your white supremacy, stop injecting I'm gonna the Kool-Aid. These people are fucking nuts. And as nuts as they are, they still don't think that this anti-vax comedy is fun. Uh, the statement from the Black Caucus of the Green Party, which got it right. They said lockdowns, mandates, and passports are the major issue of the day with millions of people protesting against them worldwide. In fact, what has become known as the medical freedom movement is arguably the biggest and most diverse international movement in world. The medical freedom movement. The medical freedom movement is Medicare for all. The medical freedom movement is canceling medical debt. That's the medical freedom movement. But Jimmy Dore, a supposed supporter of Medicare for All, is letting anti-vaxxers co-opt this moment. Like, if you truly supported Medicare for All, 
aren't the vaccines the best pitch for Medicare for all? Because we made this one life saving uh, vaccine free and it saved hundreds of thousands of lives. Imagine if we made all healthcare free. Right. Wouldn't you, if you actually supported Medicare for all, try to use this moment to your advantage to show people how important free health care is in general? But no, he doesn't. He says, actually, it's bad and big pharma bad. But take this other big pharma thing, ivermectin. That's not big pharma, even though it's produced uh, by Merck. That's not bad. My pharma good. Your pharma, pharma bad. It's brain dead. OK, let's watch Jim Brewer. Uh, risking your lives to be here. <laughs> I'm sure you've had. Wait, you're going indoors? No. They're going indoors to a comedy event, and people are on top of each other. The numbers. This is very dangerous. Are you gonna? Please tell me you're gonna quarantine before Memorial Day weekend, Charlie. <laughs> Get those been joke? vaccinated. They walk in a lot of confidence. I've been vaccinated. <laughs> I'm afraid of COVID no more. I, I'm just trying to Got my out. second shot. Woo! Like, what exactly is the joke? That people are glad that they're vaccinated? Yeah, logically so. Logically so. I, I mean, I, I, where? what is the punchline? Just LOL. People got the vaccine, Lamau. Is that literally the totality of the joke? What? What is the punchline? <laughs> I'm gonna lick some metal. <laughs> this is how you entertain babies. <laughs> oh my god. This whole thing is crazy. Is it though? It really is crazy. Is it's getting like a Simon says. During a pandemic, really that crazy though? I mean, keep in mind, this is October. So this is during the uh, Delta wave, more severe, more contagious than the Alpha strain. Is it really crazy? Like, do you honestly think it's that crazy, though? Medicine for a virus? Every day. Simon says, put your mask on when you walk in a restaurant. <laughs> Simon says, sit down and take it off. Other. Yes, everyone else is NPCs because you do the illogical thing of getting vaccinated to protect yourself during a pandemic. You're the NPCs. We're not the ones who are the hive mind who are getting our, you know, directions from Fox News or anything like that. They're the stupid ones. Dunning Kruger. That's all I have to say. Dunning motherfucking Kruger. I try to walk away. At least with Jim Brewer, though. The audience likes it. They're laughing. But with Jimmy Dore, like you have the most like vociferously anti-vax people in the country there. And they're still not laughing. At least Jim Brewer found a bunch of rubes who actually think his dumb fuck uh, humor is funny. I pay attention. I went to a park today. I saw the most. I, I, I don't know how to word this. I it's just something I didn't expect. Bless you. Look at them against the wall. We're vaccinated. I <laughs> yeah, I feel like and that's his fake laugh at his own jokes is really like it's making me almost disassociate. Yeah, that's a good point, Citrus. Interesting how the anti vax crowd all became pro Putin. It's like they're contrarian for contrarian sake. Absolutely. I feel like they just take whatever most people say and then to be subversive, they take the opposite opinion just so they can feel as if they're not mainstream. That's maybe the only thing that makes them feel cool or subversive. It's like they always align on all of these weird dipshit issues that aren't really debatable. Um, they're like a hive mind almost. It's so bizarre to me. Keep your mask above your nose, please. 
Jesus. I saw a guy went to a park today. That's it. Um, I'm guessing he went to a park and somebody was wearing a mask outdoors. <laughs> Holy shit. Shut the fuck up. I don't know what to say, but um, there's a reason why conservative comedy is bad. It's because they're either punching down or they're not speaking truth to power. They're speaking bullshit and they're pandering to the dumbest in society. That's why it doesn't fucking work. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Come.